my granddad, I always called him dad. He had a garden down at the bottom of the line there. And uh, he kept pigs and hens and vegetables we had, flowers. And every Christmas we killed a pig. Did you? Mm. So that was all go the day the pig was killed. You know, make the black pudding and the sausage and... Were you involved in that then? I wasn't that old, but I was involved. I used to clean the intestines, take all the white out and clean, then turn them inside out and take all the other side out. Right. And that made the sausage skins. Right. And I would make the sausage, you know, put the skins on the mince and they had to be given the meat and you turn the mince then so far twist the skin so that you got the links. Right. Yes, I was involved in that. <laughs> Why, when, when we were married, we used to make mats, make all our mats. We made a stair carpet and that, and put it in the mat frames, and we made a stair carpet. And did you? Yes. So it took a lot of work. Yeah, it did. It was great. Well, they were in big, long frames, and you put a hand in, and it was either patterned when you bought it, or you used to draw your own patterns on. And um, it was pulled tight, the hand was pulled tight. And the small clippings used to make the proddy mats and you used to have long pieces of material and you made hooky mats and you hooked them through and uh, that was what you put on the floor. Some people put them on the beds in winter to keep warm. Mm. The weather was rough in the winter. Every winter we were blocked in but especially in 1947 and 1963 and 1979. They were the worst winters. Um, 1947 was the worst of all, and the Italian prisoners of war uh, opened the roads out. So prisoners of war were in this area? Yes, at Harpley Camp on the way down to Wolsingham. Have you not seen that? No, I haven't. How did they get on with local people then? The they got on very well, really. They used to come round, they used to make things and sell them. Did they? Slippers and bags. And I'll give you one instance, 1941. My grandmother died. And my grandmother was held up uh, in the coffin for two and three weeks. Couldn't get up that bunk there. That's the... They used to bury them up there at the Stanley Churchyard and it was delayed for three weeks and when they did take her up they had to take her up on the four wheel horse and cart there's me and another lad from Sunnyside walked over the top of the electric wires just to pass the first house at the top there did you? you know where the, there's been a shop there right. just right. past there and it had drifted over that corner and it was over the top of the electric wires and we walked over the top of that. In 79 you'd be able to walk along there and go through them windows at the top. The snow was that high. Right, because when, when, uh, where I live, uh, laid in bed, you could see people walking by the bedroom window. Did you? Huh? <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. This would be the hardest hit place in the North East. <laughs> right, because that is point, isn't it? Is it? Yes. It's the highest point from that square house there to the reservoir in Town Hall. I learned that when I went to school. That's cool there. Well, what was the school like then? Nice little school, lovely. I don't live in the house at the side then. Charles Stewart Lampton. Was it the head, was it the head teacher's house or head he was headmaster? Headmaster. He just used to see a herd into the garden. And that's what that's what I used to do. That that there was like a, that was a orchard in the garden, right. and you had a dove court and everything. And I used to clean them out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That lovely garden. There was fruit trees, pear trees, apple trees, and plum tre trees in there. Well, just after I started school, you took your gas mask to school with you because the war started, mm -hmm. and um, it was a good school, uh, basically. We were really taught. We did uh, needlework and knitting. The first thing you did when you started school was knit a dishcloth and a kettle holder. <laughs> yeah. What were the teachers like? I had one teacher for a week and she left. She was nice and we got a new 
like primary teacher and she was really nice as well but when we got up into the middle class we had a teacher from Taolor and oh she was a hurry <laughs> go and say that it might go around and tell <laughs> well I'm telling the truth I mean she would get all of somebody by the hair and run them up and down the corridor she threw my book out the window because I had a blot on it how were you punished in them days then? the key in right the key in and I got that plenty of what them. would you get the key for then how bad was the crime oh it had to be bad it had to be what bad what sort of things were bad then well maybe you know fight for somebody or something like that Aye, I had plenty of that, but never hurt us. I haven't suffered from it. No. They talk about them, uh, it doesn't do them no good, their children, but it doesn't do them no harm either. And I'll see it now in front of the do gooders. So when did the school close down then? 1960, 61. Yeah. Mm. There was no opposition to the school closing? Oh, yes, there was opposition. Was there? Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, I think a lot of people think that Sunnyside was the better school and that should have been kept open. There's one where them garages are across there, that was the spiritualists. Yeah. There was the Methodists, the Wesleyans in the middle of the street and the church at the top. Why well, the chapel used to have a Sunday school. On, on the afternoon at two o'clock and then it had the service at night at six o'clock mm. and there was a lot went to the Sunday school because we had to have two Sundays for the anniversaries. All the kids went to Sunday school? All the it? children went to Sunday mm. school, yes. Uh -huh. the, the last funeral in there was my husband's was it? Uh, and uh, they were standing outside because I mean we had a lot of friends going to clubs and that you know and uh, the chapel was full, the, s the platform was full, and they were out standing outside. And uh, um, after that, it's nothing. It w it's just, I wish you could see it. I wish you could see it. I wish you could see it to see what they've done. Well, the chapel was struggling to keep going. And um, there was only a few of us went and we just didn't have the money to do the repairs. Apart from needing the money to keep it going, you need people there, you know, at the end of the day. We had our last service a year ago in November, and I think there'd be three of us there then. And we tried keeping it running in the community centre, because by this time the, the chapel was in bad state of repair. The, the minister, she still comes up, she's a lovely person and she's quite happy to come along and, and meet just a few of us that want to keep going. There was drapery shops, there was, there was uh, Sunnyside Cooperative, it was halfway up the street, then there was Butterfield's shop, it was a store, and then Miss Roos, the German lady, had that shop on the corner, up there, halfway up. And she used to sell all sorts, mouth organs, nuts and bolts, anything. You could get paraffin, candles, you name it, from a pinto and elephant, as they say. You know, that's an old saying, like, you could get from a pinto and elephant. 